China today accused the U.S. of sailing through the world like a bully amid an escalating row over the disputed South China Sea. Hours after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo branded Beijing's claim over the waters as completely unlawful, China's embassy in Washington hit back by accusing Donald Trump's administration of flexing muscles, stirring up tension and inciting confrontation with a completely unjustified fight. Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijin called the U.S. a troublemaker and destroyer of regional peace and stability. After two aircraft carriers, the USS Nimitz and USS Ronald Reagan, were recently dispatched to the region in a show of force. Beijing claims most of the South China Sea based on the Nine Dash Line, a vague delineation that dates back to the 1940s. China has spent years building military bases on artificial islands in the area, which is home to valuable oil and gas deposits and is a vital commercial waterway. Britain has also been at loggerheads with China, announcing today that Huawei would be stripped out of its 5G network, and reports say that the aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth is set to join military drills in the region next year. Pompeo issued his statement yesterday to mark the fourth anniversary of a tribunal decision that sided with the Philippines against the Nine Dash Line. Citing the decision, Pompeo declared that China could not make claims based on the Scarborough Reef or the Spratly Islands, a vast uninhabited archipelago. The United States now rejects Beijing's claims in the waters surrounding Vanguard Bank off Vietnam, Lucania Shoals off Malaysia, waters considered in Brunei's exclusive economic zone, and Natuna Besar off Indonesia, Pompeo said. Pompeo also rejected Beijing's southernmost claim of Malaysian administer James Shoal, which 1,150 miles from the Chinese mainland. Previous U.S. policy had been to insist that maritime disputes between China and its neighbors be resolved peacefully through UN-backed arbitration. Savaging China's policy as might makes right, Pompeo said the U.S. would stand with the international community in defense of freedom of the seas. We are making clear, Beijing's claims to offshore resources across most of the South China Sea are completely unlawful, as is its campaign of bullying to control them, he said. Beijing has offered no coherent legal basis for its nine-dash line claim in the South China Sea since formally announcing it in 2009. The world will not allow Beijing to treat the South China Sea as its maritime empire. America stands with our Southeast Asian allies and partners in protecting their sovereign rights to offshore resources, consistent with their rights and obligations under international law. The U.S. recently sent two aircraft carriers, the USS Ronald Reagan and USS Nimitz, into the South China Sea for the first time since 2014. The two carrier strike groups include guided missile cruisers USS Princeton and USS Antietam as well as three guided missile destroyers and a fleet of F-A-18E Super Hornet fighter planes. The Pentagon said the deployment was bringing flexibility and combat lethality unmatched anywhere in the world and would increase our warfighting readiness. The U.S. military also has bases in Australia, Japan, and South Korea, while Britain's Royal Navy maintains a small presence in Singapore. The U.K., Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, and Malaysia form the so-called Five Power Defense Arrangements. The way from the South China Sea sent advanced military airplanes to the region to flex its military muscles, which caused instability in the South China Sea. China, as an independent sovereign state, has the right to refuse bullying and injustice. The US and others have long accused Beijing of militarizing the region and altering geography to bolster its sweeping claims across the South China Sea. In 2017, Chinese state media said it had installed rocket launchers on Fiery Cross Reef in the Spratly Islands to ward off Vietnamese military combat divers. 
China says the human-made islands in the Spratlys, which are equipped with airstrips, are for defensive purposes and to boost safety for fishing and maritime trade. The United States, however, is one of the few countries that are not part of the convention. Meanwhile, Japan's government said today that China was pushing harder to make territorial claims in regional waters. A report adopted by the Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe's cabinet, said China has relentlessly pushed to change the status quo in the Asian seas, including sending 3,000-ton vessels into waters around disputed Japan-controlled islands. The East China Sea Islands are called Senkaku in Japanese, but Beijing also claims the islands and calls them the Diaoyu. The annual report also accused China of spreading propaganda and misinformation about the spread of the pandemic. Abe recently announced his intention to revise Japan's defense guidelines, possibly allowing Japan to go beyond its conventional defense-only role. Tension has been ramping up in recent months with Washington pressuring its allies to turn their backs on Chinese tech giant Huawei. Meanwhile, it has been reported that the first of the Royal Navy's new aircraft carriers could be deployed to the Far East to counter growing Chinese assertiveness. The Times reported plans were being drawn up for HMS Queen Elizabeth to take part in exercises in the region with the US and Japan, on its maiden grand voyage next year. A Ministry of Defense spokesman said, no decision has been made on HMS Queen Elizabeth's deployment. Britain and America have also clashed with China over Hong Kong, where Beijing has imposed a sweeping new national security law in the wake of last year's protests. Critics say it strangles the freedoms that Hong Kong was guaranteed when it was handed over from British rule in 1997, but China denies this. The UK last month announced that up to 3 million people with British national overseas status linked to Hong Kong could be given residency in Britain. China angrily rejected that move, warning that, we firmly oppose this and reserve the right to take corresponding measures. Trump and his administration have also been fiercely critical of China over pandemic. In contrast, UK ministers have said that China faces a reckoning over its handling of the pandemic, which started in Wuhan late last year. UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace said in May that China has questions to answer about how the disease was allowed to spiral out of control, amid claims that China covered up the outbreak in its earliest days. Britain was among the countries to back Australia's calls for a WHO investigation into the pandemic. China has responded to Australia's pressure with a series of retaliatory measures. China's state-run Global Times stoked further tension in May by saying the UK's response to the pandemic was flippant and ill-prepared and saying the UK needed a miracle to escape the mess it was in.